Hello my treasures, are you looking for some day one wacky and crazy decks for the fall of Odawar mini set? Well look no further than this video, we'll be going over 11 wacky decks, one for each class with a wide variety of different play styles. So let's begin with the first one which is going to be Blood Yog Weapon DK. The idea behind this is we're going to use a stereotypical Blood Death Knight package in order to get as much advantage off of Frostmourne as humanly possible, while also hoping the new card Runes of Darkness will give us access to additional copies. Because there aren't actually that many weapons in the current rotation for Death Knight, this should consistently give us Frostmourne, and that's the idea there. The other thing worth mentioning, I am running basically all the Tendril package within this deck too, as a way to get some additional RNG and also make use of both Yogg and Cho'Gall. Cho'Gall is probably not really going to be that good of a card, but it, it should be funny at least for day one, and I can't wait to try something like this out, especially if you are a control fan. For Demon Hunter, we have a deep draw relic Demon Hunter deck where we're trying to use as much draw power as humanly possible to get the biggest mind benders as possible in standard right now. We are going to be using a little bit of a outlaw package and a little bit of the relic package to do this. We're also going to be using Sir Finley as a way to put the mind benders to the bottom of the deck so we can draw them off of Relic of Dimensions as a way to instantly OTK our opponent. Okay, let's get onto the Druid deck, which is going to be Hero Power Druid. The idea behind this is we're going to be using the new Forbidden Fruit card in order to give ourselves 10 plus attack on a single turn, and hopefully be able to use it in combination with the Ignis Wind Fury weapon in order to do 15 with each attack, thus allowing us to OTK. Or we might be even able to do even more damage if we get a combination of ENR and a bunch of the other mana refreshing cards that were printed within this set and the last mini set, such as Containment Lasher. All right, let's get onto the Hunter deck, which is going to be Arcane Hunter. Arcane Hunter received the thing that I thought the deck needed the most, aka another direct damaging spell. However, given the fact that since Titans released, this deck was actually quite meta relevant, I am really scared of what this deck is capable of now. Celestial Shot, if you don't know what it does, increases the spell damage of your next spell by two, and in combination with Eversong Portal, which is a perfect curve, you'll be able to have a board of three four fours out on turn four which most classes can't deal with and if you can't win through doing something like that you will be able to win through a bunch of the direct damage that you do have access in this deck and ways to duplicate that direct damage which is why i'm running a big naga package all right let's get on to the next deck which is going to be elemental mage if you know me i am a huge fan of elemental mage and grand finale however we don't have grand finale anymore in standard rotation but we do have elemental inspiration in order for us to get a very wide board while also receiving some new direct support for this deck in the form of tainted remnant this in combination with the aqua archivist you'll be able to slam that down on turn three which is going to be annoying for a lot of decks to handle Overall, this is probably one of the stronger aggro decks that I'm including in this video, and I can't wait to test this one out. Speaking of aggro, there is going to be another aggro deck, which is going to be Hand Buff Paladin, aka Cute Paladin. This is a deck that I've been trying to make work for the last few weeks. However, we do now have the new card Muscle Otron in order to buff up our hand, thus giving us even easier access to buffing up our zero cost minions in the form of Ancient Totem and snow flipper penguin the other thing worth mentioning because we do have the ancient totems in this deck we do have a pretty high consistency of getting a all amalgam man on amalgam of the deep which makes this deck even stronger the idea is essentially to overwhelm our opponent with a bunch of really really cheap minions that keep getting buffed up through things like the new muscle otron or even seafloor savior should be a lot of fun if you are a fan of hand buff paladin all right, let's get onto the, probably the wackiest combo in this entire batch of lists. Holy OTK Priest. This is going to be centered around the new one-drop Shadow Touch 
Cavalier, which is a minion that makes your next healing effect deal damage instead. Now, how are we going to abuse this? Well, Flash Heal and Grace of the High Father both allow us to do direct healing to our opponent's face, aka direct damage. And because they're both odd cost cards, and we do also have Creation Protocol, where we could, in theory, be able to get two additional copies of the one cost minion we should be able to use thaddeus on a odd polarity in order to otk our opponent now do i think this is probably going to be the most consistent combo in the world no because it does rely on a nine card combo which isn't the easiest thing to set up now in standard and this will probably be the deck that i'll be testing on stream later today let's get on to the next deck which is going to be tendril rogue this is going to be centered around the tendril package without even looking into what we can randomly generate. The idea behind this is because Rogue does have a lot of things like Shadow Step and Break Dance and similar card effects, we should be able to bounce back Yog saron Unleashed multiple times, thus allowing us to use his abilities multiple times, and thus allowing us to have an ultimate control style of deck and that is a little bit reliant on random RNG through what we're going to be generating off of the Chaotic Tendrils. If you don't mind some casino style gameplay, this is the perfect deck for you. And speaking of a tendril deck in casino like playstyle, let's get on to Shaman, which is going to be Tendril Shaman. This is going to be centered around the tendril generator that Shaman has access to and no other class does, which is Infested Watcher. This will give you two. 1-1 one, one Chaotic Tendrils whenever it does die. We also are going to be using Conductivity within this deck for two reasons. One, we can get three Jive Insects, which is kind of funny, but not the main one condition of the deck. The other thing is we can also use Conductivity to also spread Cold Storage onto two additional Tendrils on whenever we do slam down something like Eye of Chaos. Overall, again, this is another one of those decks that's going to rely heavily on RNG and what the pool is for Yogg-Saron, but it will be a lot of fun and, again, is one of those things. If you're looking for some chaos, this is the perfect deck for you. All right, let's get on to a very consistent combo, at least it should be, aka Enrage Warrior, centered around the new Battle Swarm Faceless, which copies a damaged minion, which we're going to basically be targeting Grom. Grom will then have 10 plus attack on him because we also are going to be using things like Sanguine Depths to buff him up even further. And if you can get basically two copies of the Faceless down on the same turn as Grom, you should be able to OTK your opponent. Or if you hit Grom with a Black Rock and Roll or even a Lothamar, you should be able to OTK your opponent that way. Generally, this is going to play like a stereotypical Enrage Warrior list until you get into that big push turn with that combo. And that should actually allow this deck to compete more than it did in the past since it always did struggle going into late game. All right, let's get into the last deck, which is going to be Fatigue Mill Warlock. For this deck, there's two ways to win. The first way is going to be through the Fatigue Warlock support using Encroaching Insanity as a way to ramp up your Fatigue damaging cards even quicker than before while also using things like Lady Darkvane in order to copy this off. Then you can also mill your opponent through their entire deck by using Selfish Shellfish in combination with Shell Grave or Devouring Souls in order to force your opponent to take a bunch of Fatigue damage way easier and way quicker than ever before. Honestly, when it comes to this deck, you probably would be better off just cutting out that package, but it looks really funny, and I've been trying to make Devourer of Souls work in some deck for quite a long time, and I think this is probably the best hope that I have. All right, so those were all the decks that I came up with for the new Fall of Older War mini set. Let me know down below which ones interest you the most of playing day one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be trying out the Thaddeus OTK deck for Priest just because I really love the idea behind this and I think it has a lot of potential to be really funny. And like always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, bye bye.